The week eight review episode of the Bears Talk Underground is brought to you by my bookie. Hey, folks, it is Victory Monday. And if you like winning, then you should be going to my bookie. Why? Because when you win, they pay. That's why I'm urging you to go to my bookie. They have in-game live betting, Monday night football games getting ready to kick off, so get your bets in now. And uh, they got the over-unders on fantasy points and the most rewarding player perks in the business because they've been in, mo- in business for years with the great online reviews and the easy mobile site uh, to use. So, you know, my, bo- my bookie is currently being slammed with the new bettors, and they want to give everyone the best service possible. And if you're willing to wait until after 7 p.m. Eastern, which is, well, right now as I'm recording this, you get an extra $25 on free play of free play on deposits of over $100. So join now, and my bookie will also match your deposit dollar for dollar up to $1,000 by using the promo code BEARS25 to activate the offer. So visit my bookie online today, M Y B O O K I E, and don't forget to use the promo code BEARS25 when creating your account to claim up to $1,000 in free play. So it's up to you guys. But my bookie is the best bet that you'll have all season long. You play, you win, you get paid at my bookie. This week on the Bears Talk Underground, it was rainy, it was cold, and the field was slippery. But our beloved had a job to do on Sunday when they played host to the Jets as they were in search of their first win against the AFC East, their first win in October, and trying to punch their ticket back to first place in the NFC North. Did the Bears send the Jets home losers, or are they still spiraling? All of this plus bear up and bear down on the Week 8 review episode of The Bears Talk Underground. You know, I said on the preview show that 8 was my lucky number, and I'll be damned if we aren't sitting here on the Week 8 review with a victory episode what's going on everybody larry d back for the week eight review episode of the bears talk underground and uh you know as the the title of the show says and i even said i think at the beginning of the fourth quarter knee jerk reaction spoiler alert it was ugly but it was decisive there it would the game was never in question maybe maybe we had one of those uh butthole clinching moments uh in the beginning of the fourth quarter when uh or is it the third quarter something like that when eddie jackson threw the uh or had that penalty that result that extended the drive for the jets and they went on to score the touchdown to make it 17 to 10 no it was in the fourth quarter that's when it happened but um you know aside from us being in a close game that we were dominating pretty much up to that point the bears came right out you know and and answered that and put the game away and it was a decisive win 24 to 10 for our beloved we're back to our winning ways we snap a two-game losing streak and (laughs) i don't know if this has ever happened before maybe it has the nfl's been around forever but the bears went went from first place last week playing the patriots to last place on tuesday after um all the games were over with back to first place because we're the only team in the division that won on sunday we beat the jets uh, the Packers lose to the Rams, the, the Vikings lose to the uh, Saints, and the Lions lost to the Seahawks. So our 4-3 and three record is better than everyone else is uh, below us. The, the Vikings have four wins, but they have three losses and a tie, so their winning percentage is actually lower than ours. So we're ahead. We're back on top uh, of the division, and uh, hopefully we're going to stick around because I'm pretty sure – and I hope that I'm not getting ahead of myself. But, I mean, especially, and, and we'll talk about this more on, on Thursday when we do the, the preview show. But the Buffalo Bills 2-5 and five record right now is one of the more, and it's about to be 2-6. and six. They're playing the Patriots tonight. But their two, and, or their two victories, I should say, are, are head-scratching for sure because they beat handily at Minnesota. They beat the Vikings a few weeks ago. OK, then they come home against the Titans, who I think were 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 were, were coming in hot because they, they won a big game the week before. I think that they came in after they beat the Eagles a couple of weeks ago and then they go out there and get beat on the last second field goal by the Bills. Their two wins are over some pretty good football teams and their losses. Meh. 
You know, they're there. It's it's crazy what's been going on out there uh, in Buffalo. This was a playoff team a year ago, folks. And right now they look like anything but, you know, they're they're two and five right now, two and six with the Monday night game kicking off any moment here now. Uh, and, and I say that because they're playing the Patriots and they are over for the century against the Patriots. And since the, in the Brady era, you know, I, I don't know what the, the stat is. Maybe I'll look it up, but, um, nonetheless, we're going to be playing like a two and six football team on Sunday. Granted, we're going to be on the road where we have not performed our best, but I like our chances, uh, in this game on Sunday, we should be five and three at the halfway mark after we get done with this game next Sunday uh, against the Bills. So, but like, like I said, getting ahead of myself, we'll talk about the Bills on Thursday. We'll have uh, Sean Murphy from Buffalo Rumblings to help us uh, navigate those muddy waters out there in, in Orchard Park. So, But this game, we had to win this game to worry about winning and being 5-3 and three, uh, against the Bills uh, next week, we, we like I said in, in the open, we're 0 for the AFC East so far. We hadn't won yet in October. We had a great September, 3-1 and one in September. But we're 0 for 2 in, September, in October, two tough losses uh, that we, we, we hurt ourselves more than our opponents hurt us in those games. We really should have won them both. We had a chance to win them both, but we couldn't get out of our own way in those losses. The Dolphins are not better than us. That's the, the, the Patriots... The Patriots have won so many times in so many different ways. It wasn't all that surprising that they would find a way to win uh, against us. However, the Viking, or excuse me, the 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 Dolphins game. That's the one that's going to bug you, because that's the one where, aside from a couple of big plays, we shot ourselves in the foot. And even even after all of that, we still had a chance in overtime to win it, but we missed the the game winning field goal. So it's. Uh, that one is, you can say that the Bears should have won that game a hell of a lot more easily. You can say that the Bears should have beaten the Patriots. So, I mean, definitely that's not an ignorant thing to say. The Bears should have beaten New England, and had they not had those two special teams lapses, they would have. But the Miami game, that's definitely one where you can say we should have won that game. So right now, at worst, we, sh- we should be 5-2 and two right now. We should be 5-2. and two. That's the worst that we should be right now. Unfortunately, we're sitting at four and three. So, you know, it was an ugly game all around. As I've said before, it's in the title of the show and everything with the rain, with the gloominess and the the chilly October Chicago weather, you know, and and we were missing a couple of guys. Allen Robinson, Khalil Mack, both out for the game on Sunday. The Bears not wanting to risk Khalil Mack aggravating that ankle injury on that stellar outstanding soldier field turf uh because it's got such a wonderful reputation around the league uh the last thing that we would want to do is risk our 23 million dollar a year outside linebacker uh further aggravating an ankle injury that's been bugging him for the last two weeks on that amazing uh on that amazing piece of uh of lawn care so um yeah so he didn't play Allen Robinson, same thing, not wanting to risk having him aggravate his uh, groin injury on that, uh, you know, skating rink they call a grass field uh, in Soldier Field. When when that thing gets wet, it is extremely dangerous. I'm actually quite surprised the field wasn't more of a factor than it was because it rained on and off, but it rained the entire football game uh, on Sunday. So we even had one of our... Our own loyal listeners uh, in the crowd, uh, Eric McCubbin, one of our uh, one of our OGs, uh, put up posted up many pics. He didn't put any of them on the Bears Talk Underground page, or at least I don't think he did. He's a friend of mine on Facebook, regardless. So I saw him no matter what, but I don't think he posted them to the Bears Talk Underground page. So I don't know how I feel about that. But uh, nonetheless, he was posting videos, and he had uh, the Anthony Miller touchdown. He had the Jordan Howard touchdown. He was right there in the corner of the end zone. For the Jordan Howard touchdown, but uh, we had one of our own in the crowd uh, on Sunday, so he can attest to how accurate my description is. On and off throughout the game, it rained the whole time, so it was gray and gloomy and ugly, and so Chicago when we took on the Jets on Sunday. So, you know, it, it was a game in in the first half. You weren't happy because you were seeing a lot of things that you were tired of seeing, 
and it, it felt like the Bears were kind of playing down to the competition because at the end of one quarter, it was seven to nothing, but it felt like it should have been so much more than that. <laughs> Knee jerk reaction to the Bears and the Jets after the first quarter, and uh, pretty basic first quarter so far. I mean, the, it's it's obvious who the better team is uh, after the first quarter. Uh, the Jets are on a decent-looking drive right now. They're moving the football finally. Their first two drives were two three-and-outs, resulted in two punts to the Bears, obviously, and, uh, you know, not a lot going on. The Bears are clamping down on the run, which was the strategy coming in. You shut down the run, you put the ball in Sam Darnold's hands, and go from there. On offense... The Bears are looking really good uh, on offense. On the first drive, we moved the football down the field. We stalled out, and Cody Parkey missed a uh, 40-yard field goal. Uh, I don't know if it had anything to do with the fact they were talking about wind gusts at Soldier Field. It didn't look like the wind affected it. it. He just hooked it wide right, so the Bears come away with nothing on the first drive. And then in the second drive, to tell you the truth, I missed almost all of it because I'm, I'm, I'm a cord cutter. I'm watching on the CBS All Access app, and the goddamn thing froze up on me. Came back just in time to watch Tariq Cohen run 76 yards on a screen pass for a touchdown. So I couldn't tell you what happened before that. Probably not much, but we'll, who know, I'll never know. But uh, I saw Tariq Cohen run it back 70-plus yards for a touchdown on a screen play that was played beautifully uh, by the Bears. The, the, the Jets were coming on a blitz and they snuck right under the blitz he got it to Cohen boom we're off to the races so I haven't seen a lot from the offense to tell you that we've that we're on the right track uh, from where we were last week or how Mitch is doing uh, with the football we, we just simply haven't been out there enough for me to be able to assess that thus far but what I can tell you is aside from this last drive where we've given up a couple of third down conversions to the Jets the defense looks a lot better uh, this week, even without Khalil Mack, he's out with that ankle injury. So, those of you who were voting for that got your wish. The Bears are up seven to nothing. The Jets are just in Bears territory on their best drive of the day so far. We'll see how it goes from here. So I jumped the gun a little bit. So the aggravation came after the second quarter. The first quarter was a little bit better. And 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 about that cord cutting thing. For those of you who don't know what that means, it means I don't have cable. Uh, or satellite I use one of the streaming services I actually have direct tv now at the moment but for the area that I live in here in Cedar Rapids the um, the live local channel they don't carry CBS so I, I had to get the uh for, at least for the bear games anyway I had to get the uh the CBS app for six friggin bucks a month to be able to watch the bears at home when they play on CBS and um so that's over with for now because when uh, they play again on CBS on Thanksgiving, I'll be at home and my dad does have cable, so I'll be able to watch it there no problem. But uh, um, you know, like I said, the, the 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 app froze up on me, and it was funny because it happened this it happened a few times, uh, two twice at least, twice, both times when the Jets were punting to the Bears. The first time that it happened. I missed the punt. Like the, as soon as the punter snapped the ball, boom, it's buffering. I lost about 20 seconds of, of, of the feet. The second time when the bears got the jets to punt again, it sat there buffering at me and over and over again, I booted out of the app. I ran it back up again. I booted out of it again. I, I must've done this like three or four times. Okay. I was getting super impatient with it because the game is on. I don't give a damn if it does it when I'm trying to watch the big bang theory or something. I want it. <laughs> I want it to work without problems on Sunday. I don't care any other time. Okay. That's why I got the app in the first place. So I could watch the games live at home if I wanted to. And I do. And it was, uh, it was jerking me around. And when I said in the, in the reaction that I, it came back just in time to see Tariq Cohen, uh, score the touchdown that's literally all I saw I didn't see the play itself it came back up as Trubisky is like crossing the 30 yard line like I literally saw like the last two seconds of the play I didn't get to see it live I got to see him cross the goal line but I didn't get to actually see the setup so I actually 
wasn't excited about the touchdown. I was more super annoyed <laughs> at the moment that the feed finally came up after jerking me around for the last several minutes. But uh, nonetheless, I came back on a high note, a big play, and I kept saying it was 70 plus. It was actually 70 on the nose uh, for Tariq Cohen. And like I described it in the reaction, the Bears played it perfect. Mitch played it perfect. Um, the one guy that made a mistake, I mean, well, it was an all-out blitz for the most part. They were, they were bringing the house. And the one guy that was supposed to cover Tariq Cohen thought that Cohen was stepping up to blitz or to, to, to pass protect on the blitz. He, the linebacker thought that Cohen was picking him up, so he stopped in front of Tariq Cohen thinking that he's about to absorb a hit of some kind, like a block or, or what have you. Cohen ducks right underneath him, and then the ball comes, and it was Tariq Cohen and green grass ahead of him as long as Taylor Gabriel holds his block, and he did. He went untouched, not a fingernail, touched Tariq Cohen on that 70-yard play. So it was perfect. It was perfect. Perfect call against the perfect defense, and it worked out like gangbusters. I'm pissed off that I didn't get to see it happen or unfold live. I got to see the end result, which is Tariq Cohen running into the end zone untouched. I honestly thought that he, uh, that it, you know, I didn't know what to think, to tell you the truth. When it came back, Tariq Cohen's our punt returner. So I'm thinking initially that Tariq Cohen ran a punt back. It's, you know, it had, like that it had been buffering all that time, and it basically picked up where I left off and was showing me, you know, what I missed or, or whatever. I had no idea until they showed the replay and found out, oh, yeah, by the way, the Bears actually were on offense, and this is what happened. So I'm going to stop bitching about that now. But going back to what we were talking about in the first quarter, we weren't really on the field enough to, like I said, fully assess what was going on. The frustrations, like I said, came in the second quarter. We moved the football well on the first drive. You know, we had the big play for the touchdown on the second drive, and the Bears were stifling the Jets on offense. The second quarter was a different story. No points from the offense. The Jets were kind of getting a little bit of something going uh, on, on their offensive side. And we're in a seven to three ball game with a team that we should be killing at halftime. <laughs> Major reaction: the second quarter, the Bears and the Jets, and um, pretty boring game uh, in the first half. Very uneventful. Um, I feel like the Bears are playing down to the Jets uh, at this point. We're still winning. It's seven to three. Uh, the offense has uh, done nothing. You know, it, it's very much reminiscent of the first couple of games of the year where it's, it seems like they're able to move the football on the scripted plays, and then when they have to go off the script, all of a sudden the, the, the offense is inept and can't get anything uh, going. Um, you know, Trubisky is, is being inaccurate again uh, with the passes being way off target. Uh, stop me if you've heard this before, but he missed a wide open Anthony Miller on a third down play that would have extended the drive. Also would have gained about 20 yards if he comes down with the reception. So, uh, you know, he was closer than he has been before on a lot of those Anthony Miller throws. But, uh, again, put too much on it Anthony Miller got fingertips on it can't couldn't come uh down with it you know so it's it's getting kind of ridiculous watching Trubisky miss the same throws over and over and over and over again we're seven games into the season he's still missing the same throws the exact same way just about every single time so super uh, annoying uh, and frustrating to uh watch uh the defense has done a decent job bottling up the uh the Jets Offense. They did get a field goal on that drive that they finished that, that carried over from the first quarter into the second. Otherwise, Donald and company have not been able to get anything going. So the good news is the Bears are winning. The bad news is it's way too close than it, than it, than it should be right now. It's way closer than it should be. The Bears should be at least 14 or more ahead, you know, like 14 to 3 or something like that ahead of the Jets right now. It's kind of ridiculous that it's a one-score game. However, we do start with the football, and hopefully we can fix it going from here. On a personal note, when the game isn't that exciting, when it's kind of boring, uh, kind of like the Bears were, the, the Bear game was in the first half, uh, you know, not a lot going on, not a lot of uh, highlights. The The offense was kind of stagnant in the second quarter, not really moving the ball very well and, and what have you. Came away with zero points. Um, 
I have trouble with the knee-jerk reactions. I feel like I'm scrambling to find something to talk about. But um, anyway, the, you know, the second quarter was as, as I described it. You know, Mitch was back to missing wide-open receivers, uh, more specifically Anthony Miller. That seems to just be what he does at this point. Uh, I was texting with my buddy Ryan Simmons um, during the game that uh, if he and if he ever starts connecting with Miller on a regular basis, they could become quite the duo uh, in the NFL. I mean, this could be, I mean, probably not on, on, on a, such a legendary level, but they could definitely be notable as a, you know, somewhat of a Peyton Manning, Reggie Wayne or Peyton Manning, Marvis and Harrison type duo where these guys are just constantly hooking up. This is, he, this guy is always open and the quarterback is always finding him because Every time we see a pass thrown Anthony Miller's way, he's never trying to thread the needle or anything like that to get the ball to Miller. He's missing Miller on wide open looks. You know, I don't know if, if he's just getting excited and he lets his fundamentals uh, go sideways on him and his, his arm dips and his hand releases funny or something like that. But whatever it is, Miller is always wide open or he's got a step on his man. He's always got big play potential on the throws that he keeps missing. So if those two ever get it figured out or if Mitch gets it figured out to get, and you know, to get the ball to Miller when he's open the way he is, A, Anthony Miller is going to be a superstar and B, the offense is going to get a hell of a lot more exciting than it's already been so far this year. So uh, that's that was the frustrating thing about watching the second quarter was missed opportunities and and Mitch, um, you know, not throwing the ball very well again. And, and as I mentioned before, and during the knee jerk reaction, you kind of felt like the Bears are playing down to the Jets. Like they answered the call last week when the Patriots were in town. We we're kind of balling out there in the first in the first half when we got on that seventeen to seven lead uh, and what have you. It was a ball game at halftime, twenty one to seventeen. It was super exciting uh, and everything, and and it just didn't really feel like the same energy was there. I don't know if it's be we were missing Mac or if it was the weather again or something. I don't know. It just didn't really feel like this. We had the same pop, the same oomph uh, that we had in, in other games. So, but we moved into the second half. Um, <laughs> you'll hear me talk. I mean, you'll hear me right at the very beginning of the knee jerk reaction, I think says it all about how I felt about what was going on uh, in the third quarter. You know, again, not a very exciting game. The Bears made a move and scored a touchdown uh, in the third quarter, but still not feeling good about where we're at against this team. (laughs) Knee-jerk reaction in the third quarter, the Bears and the Jets, and it hasn't been much prettier out there in the third quarter. Uh, Offense has looked a little bit better. They got some offensive rhythm going a little bit. Uh, Finished off, uh, you know, the first drive was garbage. They come out with the second one and take that one into the end zone with a touchdown pass to Anthony Miller. Uh, A short one. It was the first red zone trip by anybody in the entire football game. Um, A stat they threw out just a minute ago. uh, The Jets have had two three and out drives in this quarter. They've, they ran six plays in the third quarter. That's it. Our offense was out there for the rest of it, and uh, we just lost a yard on third and one, so it looks like we'll be kicking a field goal to start the uh, fourth quarter, make it a 14-point 14 uh, 14 game, and it'll be like a chip shot. It'll be like a 27, 28-yarder. It's not going to be a long field goal at all, probably shorter than an extra point at this rate. But, um, you know, it hasn't been a pretty game. I don't know how much we can we can put that on the conditions. It's been rainy and windy, gloomy, you know, the field not in the best condition, that kind of thing. That's actually why Mac isn't playing today. They didn't want him aggravating that ankle injury on this slippery, uh, messy field. So we'll see. I mean, uh, you know, there's only so much you can blame on, on the elements. You know, it, Mitch has been inaccurate throughout the entire season, so how much do gusty winds and all that kind of stuff have to contribute to the way he's throwing the ball today? So, I don't know. We'll see. We have the football. It's going to be fourth and two, I think, and I think we're going to be attempting a field goal to make it a 14-point game here to start the fourth. So there it was. You know, Mitch wasn't putting it on target the way that you the one you way they wanted to, but you know he he was having his moments in the third quarter. We dominated the third quarter, two three and outs by the Jets. We were on offense 
the rest of it, but we only came away with seven points. And I guess if you want to give the field goal that we kicked at the start of the fourth quarter to the third quarter, we scored 10 points. We should have scored more. Um, you know, we should have been further ahead on this team uh, than we were. Um, and that's what the frustrating thing was. And, you know, going into the the fourth quarter, we're, we're, we're two scores ahead, 14-3 to three at the end of uh, three. Uh, we're about to put some more points on the board, or so one would think, uh, to start the fourth quarter, further extending our lead uh, and everything. But just something just didn't let you relax uh, in that game. And, um, you know, the, fourth, the first half of the fourth quarter did you no favors because that's when the A.D. Jackson thing happened and we were in a tighter football game than we should have been at that point. And, you know, thinking that maybe the Jets have just got them, got that glimmer of hope that they need to make a run at this thing. But in the end, the Bears proved that they were the better team on the field, as you could be just look at the stats and you see that we were. But we actually put our foot down and put our foot on their throats and ended the game and came away with, with as, as, as ugly as it was, and that's a word I've used a lot to describe this game, as ugly as it was, it was decisive, and there was no doubt who the better football team was on Sunday. Major reaction to the fourth quarter, the Bears and the Jets, and it wasn't pretty, but it was decisive. The Bears walk away 24-10 to winners over the New York Jets today. Um, and it shouldn't have been that close, to be honest with you. Uh, the Jets, uh, it was a third and long situation. Uh, Darnold misses his target, his receiver, but Eddie Jackson comes in, plows the kid over. Not only did he not have the football, but he had a few steps before he ran into him. If he had just, like, bumped into him or something like that, probably don't get the flag, but he literally ran the guy over, gets a 15-yard unnecessary roughness penalty, and the Jets were able to put that in the end zone to make it 17-10 to at that point. And, um, but... All credit to the Bears. They answered. They started giving the football to Jordan Howard, who started running the put, who started running it downhill. They let him finish it off inside the five-yard line. A couple of uh, a back-to-back runs from Howard makes it 24 to 10, and that's where we were. Uh, Trubisky settled down in the second half, uh, but they weren't trying some of the same throws that they were before. They were they were much more in his wheelhouse as far as like I think. Nagy saw that we needed to get him going as far as getting him in a rhythm. He was much more consistent in the second half and um, finished with 271 and uh, two touchdowns. Anthony, Anthony Miller caught the touchdown in the, uh, in the third quarter, the fourth, whichever it was. But anyway, so there you have it. Um, we did not sack. Well, actually, we did. We finally did get a sack on, uh, on the AFC East. We were 0 for the AFC East. Uh, we sacked Darnold on a corner blitz Callahan closed down the pocket and I think it was Hicks that finished it off if I'm not mistaken but um you know we we got Jordan Howard going the way that we need to get him going I'll talk about that more here in just a second but the Bears get the win 24 to 10 we go on the road for the Bills next Sunday and then we get ready for that three division game gauntlet in 11 days with Detroit Minnesota and then Detroit again on Thanksgiving Day so a big stretch for the Bears an important game against Buffalo next week because we need that victory there heading into the second half that slight bit of hesitation there that I had right there at the end when I said we need that victory there and I was going to say as insurance you know in case we lose a game it's like but I didn't want to say that at the moment because those three games we need them all they're division games we can't lose those games and as much as it sucks to watch the Bears lose to New England as much as it sucked to watch them lose against the uh, the Dolphins they're AFC East games in the end they don't really matter that much I mean you'd have to go through a slew of tiebreakers for those losses to matter I mean obviously they matter in the win loss column but when it comes to tiebreakers they're deep down on the list before that becomes a factor in common opponents or 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 what have you in the overall scheme of things those games don't matter that much you know a win is a win a loss is a loss no matter who it happens against but if you have to lose games 
You want to do it in those out-of-conference games because the NFC ones, those are the games that can hurt you. You got 12 of those, so you can't screw those up. And we got our only our second division game coming up in a couple of weeks when we play the, the, the Lions uh, and the Vikings back-to-back at home before going to Detroit uh, for Thanksgiving Day. That's going to be a, a critical, very short stretch, 11 days. We play those three games in. And, um, you know, if, if we want to head into those games with the proper attitude, with a positive frame of mind, we got to go out there to, to Archard Park on Sunday and blast the Bills right off the field. I mean, I want a Tampa Bay Buccaneer epic win on Sunday uh, against the Bills. With or without Khalil Mack, with or without Allen Robinson, we have enough talent on our football team to run the Bills out of their own stadium on Sunday. That's what I want to see. I want a massacre out in Buffalo on Sunday to get ready for the Lions and the Vikings and the Lions again in those three days. I mean, it's uh, it's going to be a very, very critical stretch. You'll hear me say that many, many times over the next several weeks. Critical stretch. Get used to the phrase. But, um, you know, the, the Jordan Howard thing that I mentioned there, uh, it was important that we finally got him going in the fourth quarter at the most critical time. Uh, in the game we're trying to hang on to this lead and and get the game over with and and Howard is that guy you got to keep giving him the football because he's the one you you keep feeding him the rock he's going to bust one for you or he's going to start breaking them for you if if you hand the football to him here once and then three four plays five plays next drive then you give it to him again you know he's not going to be able to be the back that we know him uh, to be and maybe that's why he's not that good a back for the Nagy offense, or maybe that's why people felt that way coming into the, the season. But the stats don't lie. You see what happens when you hand it off to him two plays out of three or something like that. He will get going for you if you do it like that. So I don't know. Maybe we'll take a page out of that, and, and going forward, maybe it'll be the Jordan Howard show on Sunday against the Bills. I don't know how good they are against the run. That's what our guest Sean Murphy will be for on thursday so that's pretty much gonna do it we come away with the victory uh ugly but decisive is is the way that i like to uh that i like to put it ugly wins are still wins and we needed one after those two back-to-back losses to new england and miami so that'll do it for the review what do you say we wrap this bad boy up with everybody's favorite segment bear up bear down Remember, guys, use the promo code BEARS25 to get an additional $25 in free play on deposits up to $100 if you make that deposit after 7 p.m. Eastern time. And my bookie will match your deposit a dollar for dollar up to $1,000. So if you drop in $1,000, you get $2,000 to play with. I mean, what's better than that? And uh, even though MLB wrapped up over the weekend, you still got the NHL, you got basketball, you got the the NFL, the Lions for week nine are out already. Didn't see one on the Bears yet, but we're playing the Bills. So I think we're already seven point favorites or something like that. I have to check my bookie to find out uh, for sure. But uh, who you're betting on is just as important as who you are betting with. And that's why I recommend my bookie. So be sure to go to my bookie online, M Y B O O K I E, and enter the promo code BEARS25 to take advantage of their newest offer. So there you go. Now let's get to this bear up and bear down. And to tell you the truth, it's um, who am I unhappy with this week? I re- you know, I really couldn't think of anyone that I wanted to put on the bear down list i mean i don't uh i wouldn't put mitch on the list his performance didn't really warrant bear downs this week didn't warrant a bear up either i mean he was good on the ground again he did settle down in the second half so it's like they kind of cancel each other out he wasn't so good in the second half that it made you forget his performance in the first so you know it was a a a, uh, an even performance as far as positive negative so it's like one side outweighed the other uh, kind of thing um, you know defensively I'm trying to think of anyone it's like you know Eddie Jackson made that stupid play 
you know, and actually to tell you the truth, it wasn't even that bad. Uh, when I saw it again after after I did a knee jerk reaction and I saw it again, to tell you the truth, I didn't really have a big problem with what happened. He probably could have, uh, you know, pulled it back a little bit, you know, maybe just by the bumps into him and maybe he falls over, you know, just kind of tips over kind of thing instead of just straight rampaging the guy straight. Uh, what's it calling a truck sticking the guy uh, and just straight plowing him over. You know, it was a little too you know, obvious the play was over and he comes in and, and murders the guy. And, and yeah, it did put an unnecessary touchdown on the board. Cause that would have, that was third down. That would have ended the drive right there. But you know, I, I wouldn't put that, you know, that wasn't a bear down worthy offense. Uh, do we go with Cody Parkey? You know, he's been a little inconsistent lately. He missed the 40 yarder that would have put us on the board early. I mean, it didn't have, and, 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 you know, and it didn't affect the outcome of the game. It just meant we won by 14 instead of 17, you know, that kind of thing. I'm not really, I don't know who messed up this week. I'm trying to think. I mean, if I wanted to be a dick, I put Kyle Long on the list because he can't, the poor guy can't seem to stay healthy, but, uh, you know, I'm not a dick, so I'm not going to do that. Um, let's see, just thinking out loud here. Yeah, I got nothing. So I'm I'm gonna go with no bear downs this week. I usually write this out before I do it, but I'm uh kind of in a hurry. I've got some studying to do uh because uh I I'm pretty sure and my OGs know this, but uh I'm a huge KISS fan and they just announced tour dates for their final tour. And um uh, they've got two dates that are gonna be close to me, both of which I wanna try to go to. There's a show in Chicago and then there's another one in the Quad City area, which is only about an hour from where I live. Chicago is just a trip home for me. That's where my family's at. So both of them are easy trips to make, and they're within a week of each other. The, the Chicago show is on March 2nd. The Quad City show is on March 10th. So I got some work to do. But uh, like the pre, like the se- tickets go on sale Friday, but the pre-sale is on Wednesday. So I got to find out to see what I can do to get in on the pre-sale so I can get some decent seats for what could be uh, the last shows because they they said this this tour could last anywhere from two to three years so I'm, I'm guessing that I'll probably have a chance to see them at least one more time before it's all said and done but you can't bank on that there there are no odds in my bookie on whether or not they're going to do a second leg and come back around again so you know you gotta you gotta go with what's in front of you and March 2nd and March 10th is what's in front of you so that's what I'm I'm going to attack and I got to see what I need to do to get in on the pre-sale so I can uh you know, so I won't have to wait until Friday to get the scraps of the those that that went through the presale uh, on Wednesday. So I got I got to get get it done so that I can I got to get this done so I can get to work on that. So forgive me, but this is a big deal. I'm a huge Kiss fan. I'm not missing these shows. I'm trying to go to both, so I also got to figure out how I'm going to pay for this. So, <laughs> but uh, anyway, um, so I didn't write it all out. Um, now let's do some bear ups. Um, Bear up for uh, Jordan Howard, uh, fourth quarter, awesome. He had, I think, over 60 yards of his rushing in the fourth quarter. So maybe if you want to do a bear down, I kind of give one to, to Matt Nagy for waiting until the fourth quarter to put the ball, to put the game in Jordan Howard's hands. I mean, with the way that Mitch was struggling in the first half, you got to get the ball to Jordan Howard, and more consistently, because Jordan Howard's had a had a decent amount of carries going into the fourth quarter. He had carried the ball 13, 14 times, something like that. But it was like one carry here, five plays, another carry here, three plays, another carry there, you know, that kind of thing. He was spreading them out too thin. And Jordan Howard is a, I forget the term that I've used before. I've been trying to think of what it was, but it, he's, a, he's more of a, a bunches kind of runner. You give it to him like two out of every three plays or, you know, something like that to get him in a chance, to give him a chance to get something going, to get him in a rhythm, because you saw what happened in the fourth quarter when we finally got him on a rhythm. He basically dominated that last touchdown drive. He was running downhill and killing the Jets. Now, I know it was the fourth quarter, and the Jets were probably worn out at that point in time, but you can't argue with what was happening. You got him the ball like five plays out of six, and he got you positive yardage and big chunks the entire way, you know, you end up giving it to him the last few plays to get the football uh, in the end zone. And, and, and there you go. You know, he ended up finishing up with about 80, 81 yards on on 22 carries. And he had 
I think I saw the graphic was like 33 yards on 13 carries. So that means he got 60 yards on the last nine carries or 50, 55 or something like that on the last nine averaging about six yards a carry in the fourth quarter. So we need to keep feeding him a little bit early. So let's call that an honorable bear down to Matt Nagy because it took him for the fourth quarter to figure out Jordan Howard is our horse and we need to keep giving him uh, the ball. Um, Who else? Uh, bear up to James Daniels, our, our rookie uh, left guard who was playing in, in place of the injured uh, Eric Cush. Uh, God knows we're going to need him going forward because uh, hopefully Cush is ready to come back this week against the Bills. Uh, I don't know if they're going to move Daniels to right guard and put you know put Cush back in at left guard, or if they'll just use Cush and his versatility to put him on the right side to play for the injured Kyle Long. Uh, but you didn't notice the rookie out there, and that's the best thing that you can say about an offensive lineman you didn't hear him get called for holding he didn't get you know beat for a pass rush up the middle or anything like that he seemed to have a pretty good afternoon and uh, you assume that anyway when you don't hear his name getting called so for his first flat out start not coming out of the game performance bear up to James Daniels and um, let's see who else is out there let's give a bear up to Taylor Gabriel had a you know a nice bunch of catches when he finally got to be a part of the offense he was kind of shut out by the Patriots last week uh same thing bear up to Anthony Miller if if he and Trubisky ever start hooking up on a consistent basis Anthony Miller is going to be a lights out receiver because that kid is always open I mean anytime and that's what's so frustrating about those throws between Trubisky and Miller is that he is always so open if he would just if he could just calm down a little bit or or work on his fundamentals or something like that to um to 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 hone in his delivery to get the ball coming out of his hand the right way every time he and miller are going to be hooking up and miller is going to be something really really special i just got a feeling about this kid that's why i was so excited when we drafted him and everything that he's been talking about leading up to training camp I said the reason that I liked him was because it sounded like confidence, not arrogance. There's a huge difference. Arrogance makes you not like that person. It makes you not want to see them succeed. Confidence is like, hell yeah, young fellow, go out there and do your thing. And I think that that's what we're watching Anthony Miller do. And if he and Trubisky can start hooking up on a consistent basis, Anthony Miller is going to be worth every penny of that second round pick that we gave up uh, to get back into the draft to, to, to pick him. Uh, this past April so I mean he's I really think that that he could explode uh, if he and Trubisky can start hooking up on a consistent basis or more 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 uh, frankly if Trubisky can just work on the accuracy and get him that football every time he misses Miller Miller is wide open so we're always missing out on big plays when we're trying to hit Anthony Miller it's it's that's what's the most frustrating part about it like those passes early on in the year he missed Taylor Gabriel a couple of times those were potentially huge plays that Mitch was missing so it was like Nagy's making the right call Trubisky's making the right decision but he's making a bad throw so that's something that Mitch needs to work on and it's frustrating guys I know it is we've talked about it on the show before you know but I, I really do think maybe even I need to cool it need to chill out on Trubisky a little bit because, yes, we want him to play better now. No doubt. We have a good football team uh, this year. When Mac comes back healthy, Allen Robinson comes back healthy, we're going to be even better than we were on Sunday uh, against the Jets. We're in a position to win now. The, the Khalil Mack trade, I think, solidified that and that was the message that Ryan Pace was sending to the team when he made that trade as aggressively as he did we want Trubisky to play better now but I think we all know I think we all know that his best football is ahead of him you know that's why I keep talking about 2019 not that I want 2019 to get here any sooner but I really do think 2019 is the year that we're special absolutely special this is the year we make a move Next year is the year that we blow the world up. I honestly believe that. So maybe we need to dial it back on Mitch just a little, just a little. We can still be mad, but anybody out there, and I'm not guilty of this, but anybody out there thinking he should be benched or, you know, whatever, like Jason Lockenfora or, you know, or whatever, you, no, not, it's not the move. 
He's the guy. He will be the guy. And unless something happens, him getting hurt or anything like that, knock on wood, he will be the guy for the foreseeable future. You know, uh, I don't want to see Chase Daniel on the field. I'm confident that we'll do well if Chase Daniel is out there, but I don't want to see Chase Daniel out there kind of like they're doing in Tampa Bay. Jameis Winston played himself out of the starting lineup. Fitzmagic is going to be the starter again after he almost brought the, pack, the Buccaneers to a victory yesterday. They were down 17 points, 19 points, something like that. Fitzmagic comes in, starts slinging it all over the field. Boom. They tie up the game, and the Bengals kick a late field goal to win it just b- before the end of regulation. You know, I don't, that's not going to happen to the Bears. I don't think Trubisky's going to play so bad he gets himself benched, and I don't think Nagy would bench him, to be honest with you. They, we got too much invested uh, in the kid. So, anyway, trying to think. Anybody on defense that we want to give some love to? <sighs> Nah, nah, I'm good. So that's it. Anyway, that's going to do it. Come back on Thursday. Sean Murphy from Buffalo Rumblings on SB Nation will be joining us to help preview the Bears week number nine. Good Lord. That is the, the, the middle point of the season. We got eight games left after the game against Buffalo on Sunday, and then we'll finally close the book on the AFC East. So come back on Thursday to hear my talk with Sean Murphy and what is going on with this crazy Bills team. They're probably going to get murdered tonight against (laughs) New England, not because that Buffalo is especially bad. It's just that I keep seeing the the stat that Tom Brady is 27 and three uh, against the Buffalo Bills. And I'm pretty sure he's got like a ridiculously long winning streak against Buffalo at this point. So We'll have to wait and see uh, what happens there, but uh, I'm pretty sure that when we talk to Sean uh, on Thursday that we'll be talking about a bouncing back from another loss to the Patriots. So anyway, come on back for that. And until then, my name is Larry D, and this has been the Bears Talk Underground.